Hi, I'm Dylan Weiser and welcome to Homer's Downtown Tiny House. So this building came to be a tiny house in a pretty indirect way. It was built in Anchor Point in the 1990s and then was moved out East End Road here in Homer, Alaska and became a metalsmith shop. And then in 2015, I purchased it and moved it into town here and built built this tiny house out of a labor of love with a, a partner and mentor of mine who uh, showed me the way. I thought we'd start here on the deck. One of the real important things I think about when, when building a tiny house is maximizing your outside space. And so definitely tried to do that here at the tiny house. The deck is, is exactly the same size as the inside. And so it was really important to have a, a big outdoor space and a nice lawn, a small wildflower garden. Really enjoy spending a lot of time out here on the deck as well as on the inside. One of the things I think, especially up here in Alaska, that comes in really helpful in these small spaces are these grates in the, in the floor here. They sort of brush off all the snow and the dirt and the grit before you get inside and really help out. Come on in, I'll show you around. Let's start off here in the kitchen. And one of the things that you might notice is a little different than a traditional tiny house is this is not a full-size kitchen. I opted to build a small kitchenette to maximize space in other areas. The reason why I chose to do a two burner portable stove instead of something built into the countertops was two reasons. One, it would maximize space for the countertops. And the other reason is on nice days, you can now take this outside and there's electricity outside that you can plug into and, and not only barbecue outside but cook outside. I have a, a small mini fridge and then there's a toaster oven as well. So as we move into the living room one of the things that we have here is a uh, click and clack couch so that uh, folks who come and want to sleep downstairs they have that option. So that's a nice space to kick back and relax and um, take the day in and one of the nice things is these French doors. You can open both of these wide. When, when the sun is shining and the clouds are gone, you can see the, the mountains and the glaciers and the bay and, and it's just a spectacular view from the, from the living room and the deck. It was a lot more difficult and a lot more involved than I thought. Um, one of the things when you're dealing with millimeters instead of feet to, to find things to fit and, and storage, that absolutely becomes a challenge. Also, the cost goes up exponentially when you're talking about a small space. You still need a kitchen, which is a certain amount per square foot no matter what, and a bathroom, which is a certain amount per square foot. So the, the cost really is pretty high per square foot um, for a tiny house. The tiny house was a pre-existing building, so we were absolutely working within constraints of, of the size of the walls, the ceiling, and so it was many months of, of laying this out and, and really thinking about how this was going to work. One of the reasons we chose this design and this particular ladder, we wanted something sturdy, we wanted something that was easy to use, but we also wanted something where you could climb and be at the maximum height when you climbed up there but then also be easy to store away when you were finished. After months of research, uh, this was the design that, that I fell in love with and, and that Jim built and um, it works perfectly. So let me tell you a little bit about how the loft came to be. There wasn't a loft originally in this place, but I knew I wanted a separate sleeping quarters. That was really the, the idea for the loft, but we were limited by the height of the roof. One of the considerations was being able to access it and uh, have a full-size bed and be able to have two people sleep up there. And so what we did was the bed is on the floor up there, um, the lamps are on the floor, and so all the outlets are low to the ground, so it's, it's really easy to access. One of the new additions to the tiny house is this heater here, and this is a natural gas Renai heater. It is incredibly efficient, and when the tiny house was built, initially we had an electric radiator installed and found that it was almost $250 a month in electric costs. And so we did that for one year and realized we had to do something different. And so ran natural gas to the tiny house and installed this heater, which um, in the wintertime has approximately a $22 a month cost. And so um, 
I can't recommend these Renai heaters highly enough. If you come in and you turn it on, it will heat this place up in a matter of five minutes. One of the things in a tiny house that I felt was going to be very important to not only myself, but the guests who would stay here was a full-size bathroom. That was a priority when designing the, the tiny house. We have a full-size shower here that guests use and also a sink and toilet that is pretty spacious compared to the rest of the size of the tiny house. And, and I know guests definitely appreciate having that extra space. Another thing that was important that was uh, an idea I thought of and, and really has come in handy was in a small space. One, a very quality fan um, for exhaust in the bathroom. Another priority uh, in designing a bathroom when we were looking at various tiny houses was I noticed so many tiny houses don't have windows in the bathroom. And so it was a priority to put in not just one but two windows in the bathroom that gave really a substantial amount of light coming into the tiny house. One of the things that uh, Jim recommended and has paid off is before you put the sheetrock up, photograph where all your plumbing is. And so when you're going to install shelving or anything like that, you know exactly where those water pipes are. It, it has just come in so helpful. Another thing that was uh, really important and, and uh, I think is a huge benefit was when we were laying out the lights and the electric sockets after it was designed I said okay now let's double that and so there's twice the amount of lights and twice the amount of electric sockets in here um, and they're all on dimmer switches and so you really can get a, a nice lighting in, in a small space. I wouldn't change anything. There was there was some things that I wanted to do that other people said that's not a good idea and we, we got rid of those ideas. I wanted to put a sliding door instead of French doors, and I was told absolutely not. You know, French doors would really define this place, and that was the correct decision, because on a beautiful summer day with this view, you can open up these doors and really feel like the outside's coming in, and that was, that was the goal, to really be connected. Really liked how the loft came together and the access to the loft through the sliding ladder. Um, that was a design that I had saw it online that uh, cost about $5,000 to, to have shipped here and, and put in. And my mentor, who, who did most of the work on this place, Jim, said, I can build that and built it for about $200. And so I was blown away with the, the quality of, of his work. Well, thanks folks for stopping by Homer's Downtown Tiny House. And if you need more information, you can find us on Facebook or Airbnb or VRBO. Just type in Homer's Downtown Tiny House and you'll find us easy. I'm Dylan Weiser and thanks again.